Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to the Royal Society. Sort of regular visitor now, Adam Savage from Tested is joining us. We're here with Keith Moore, the head librarian. And Keith has pretty much figured out what Adam's into. <laughs> Making stuff and yeah. building stuff. So we've got three vehicle mechanisms here. And some of them we've seen on Objectivity before, but the question is, could Adam make one of these? All right, we'll say if you could make one of these, which would it be? That's yeah. going to be our challenge. Okay. Why do you have descriptions of mechanical vehicles here at the Royal Society? People have sent these in as suggestions? Exactly for... right, yes. So the Royal Society, when it was founded, they were interested in any new inventions. All of these things were sent into the Royal Society, and we've selected some for you, but there's one even earlier thing in, in book form but we'll get to that okay. in a moment. Where do you want to start this uh, showcase? I think we have to start with, <laughs> with the walking cart of Francis Potter. Wheels are just fine for carts, but no, not for Potter. No, you want to reinvent the wheel, surely. <laughs> and the society was interested in carriage building, sure. or how to make a good carriage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and here's a suggestion. So this was sent in. Robert Hooke had a look at it, gave his opinion. And now we're asking you yours. And, and you'll have come across walking vehicles before. I have, have, you? I have come across a couple of walking vehicles. Yeah, yeah possibly not on this planet. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. We have a key here so you can see the uh, individual parts mm -hmm. and, and how they're made up. I love this key. Let H define a horse. H. <laughs> oh, that's the horse. H. <laughs> I think I'm right in saying in some of the earlier uh, ones here, we've got a few mechanical drawings as well. Oh, oh, oh. So you can see how this some is, of the mechanical ah. mechanisms work. Oh, this is so this is, this is good. And, and you, you do have He's got them knee. bending at the knees. Yeah. Well, that, why is that anyway, amazing? You actually could do a walking mechanism driven by friction with straight legs. Bending at the knees is more complicated. It's, yep. it's, a, it's a surprising addition to the mechanics. He does seem like he knows what he's talking about. Works for people. <laughs> it does, yeah. yeah. So oh. you do have some detailed yeah, drawings yeah. here. So if you're going to build something like this, you've got a bit to go on. Yeah, no, that's very, very helpful. There's your first contender. That's the first contender. Let H describe a horse. There's, hang on, which one's the horse again? Oh, <laughs> the H. The H is the horse. What's okay, next? Okay, number two. Okay, well, this, this is a printed book. And this is by John Wilkins. So we can have a look at it. And it says... Magic. Mathematical magic or the wonders that may be performed by mechanical geometry. This, this is your book, sure. Yeah, yeah, clearly. I mean, come on. Uh, and this is, as you can see, from 1648. So this predates the Royal Society. Wow. So all manner of inventions in this particular book. The one we've selected is this one. Why wouldn't you want a wind-driven chariot? I can't imagine any reason why I wouldn't. Look at that. It's yeah. a vein that turns in one direction, that drives a shaft, that drives this chariot. It's like yeah. a bathtub. And he says, you know, I have often wondered why none of our gentry who live near great plains and smooth champions have attempted anything to this purpose. The experiments of this kind being very pleasant and not costly. That's an advantage when you make it. That is totally you know. an advantage. <laughs> I love this. It's a very straightforward design. It's a very yeah. straightforward principle. It's very much more practical, I think, than the leg-driven horse carriage. Unless it's a calm day. Yes, <laughs> indeed. In the doldrums, it's no good. Keith, I must admit, I, I'm really surprised how, how accurately you have surmised my specific mechanical love of the oh, esoteric God. and bizarre. I can see you turning up to the office in that, you know. <laughs> yes. Well, we need to move into the 19th century. Okay. Uh, this is Charles Hudson, who sends the Royal Society a design for a wheeled vehicle. So this is a, intended to be a military vehicle for getting troops over rough ground. It's a tricycle arrangement, as you can see, it's driven by stirrups. By, so you by stirrup yeah, pedals, and it's right. like a penny farthing construction. Quite right, too. Does the umbrella contribute to the motion? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Well, it keeps the sun off your head, right, right. which is very useful, but it's also bulletproof. So, so you could it, tip it down onto yeah. the oncoming fire. Enemy troops coming the other way, you, you tip your shield down, oh. and there, there we go. Because the one thing I've always wondered on a tricycle is whether shrapnel can hurt me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's a fair question. And uh, now we have the now answer. Now we have the answer. The idea of riding this sounds thrilling. He's got this little seat here, this almost like a unicycle seat that you sit back from the wheels. The axle goes through here. It's a spectacular design and it's so weird using these stirrups on the camshaft for driving the wheels. I really like that part. Do we know whose design this was, Keith? Charles Hudson. Yes, so if you'll just turn the page here, you 
can see the details just here. Charles Hudson, 1825. Mm -hmm. Was one of these ever made as far as you know? As far as we know, no. It wasn't even published. You could be a real pioneer here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I really... I... 1825, if you get it done in 2025, that'd be the 200 year anniversary. <laughs> See the seed I'm planting? That seed. That's really good. Yeah, yeah that's how true. How Charles years. Hudson would I, be. I, can I tell you, gentlemen, how seen I feel in this moment? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's this one. This one wins. Oh, very good. But a spectacular trio of, of choices and design. Watch this space, people. 2025, <laughs> tested.com, where Adam does his work. We're going to see the 200 year anniversary of this design celebrated by Adam riding one of these over the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> does it have it? In, in full military uniform. Oh, well, 1825 military uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're on. That's totally. I, I think I've got one of those. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> In the opinion of many persons, English cheese is not what it used to be in the good old time. This is 1858. 1858, wow. wow. Of late years, a good deal of cheese has been imported into England from America, some of which is by no means bad. Wow. The majority, however, are inferior and are sold at a low price, being generally badly made and deficient in flavour. That's still kind of... That's a, not a bad description of American cheese. 